سوريا ستصبح بوابة لمصدر جديد للطاقة لنتحدث هنا عن الخط القديم لأنابيب الغاز التي قد لا تكون مجدية حاليا مع تغير طبيعة أسواق الغاز وإنما عن الهيدروجين لكن لماذا الهيدروجين؟ في منطقة الشرق الأوسط يوجد نحو 67 مشروعا لإنتاج الهيدروجين والأمونيا قيد التطوير حاليا بطاقة إنتاجية تصل إلى 9 ملايين طن متري سنويا بحلول 2040 من المتوقع أن يكون الشرق الأوسط رابع أكبر منتج للهيدروجين النظيف في العالم هذا الإنتاج الضخم سيجعل من دول المنطقة وتحديدا دول الخليج قادرة على تصدير كميات كبيرة من الهيدروجين للأسواق الخارجية وتحديدا لأوروبا بعض التوقعات ترجح أن تصدر دول المنطقة مليونين وأربعمائة ألف طن متري سنويا على الأقل من الهيدروجين النظيف بحلول 2040 إحدى الخيارات المطروحة لتصدير هذا الهيدروجين هو استخدام الأنابيب أنابيب مؤسسة هيدروجين يوروب التي ترى أن الخيار المثالي لذلك قد يكون نقل الهيدروجين عبر خطوط للأنابيب من دول الخليج لأوروبا مرورا بالأراضي السورية وتكوين شبكة خطوط أنابيب شبيهة بتلك التي تربط شمال أفريقيا بأوروبا الرئيس التنفيذي لمؤسسة هيدروجين يوروب يورغو تشاتزي ماركاكيس أكد وجود خطط ملموسة لنقل الهيدروجين من منطقة الخليج إلى أوروبا عبر الأراضي السورية باستخدام خطوط للأنابيب مشيرا إلى أن ذلك يدعم خطط القارة الأوروبية في مجال الطاقة النظيفة well, at the moment, um, the best way to export hydrogen is to process it to make it ammonia or even fertilizer and then to export the processed goods. We call it embedded hydrogen. Uh, so you produce the hydrogen here, but the value of the hydrogen will be in the products that you then sell, also steel. Huh? So re reducing uh, oxygen from iron ore and to export um, sponges with reduced uh, oxygen, that's also a way out. But that's the immediate thing. And we talked about the fertilizer alliance that we founded here or initiated here uh, in order to make this happen in the fertilizer business. However, the cheapest way to export hydrogen is pipelines. There's no doubt. Um, and by the way, it's also 8 to 16 times cheaper than using cables. So if you, if you want to export electrons, that's possible in a limited way, but it's more expensive. So it's the cheapest way. We have pipelines connecting the MENA region, Middle East, North Africa, with Europe, but unfortunately not in the eastern part. So in the eastern part, we still need to uh, connect. In the western part, uh, Morocco, Algeria uh, are connected with Spain and Italy. In the eastern part, there was this big East Met project that's very well known in the region. Honestly, I think there is a big perspective in connecting onshore. And uh, after the developments in Syria, I believe that connecting uh, the Gulf region uh, via Syria with Turkey and then bring the hydrogen via pipeline systems via the Balkans or via Greece, Italy to central European markets is the plan. Um, and we have very, very concrete uh, plans to do it. Uh, we also have from the European side the so-called European Backbone Initiative. Um, here in the European Backbone Initiative 
Germany is the focal point, so there are a lot of corridors that lead to uh, Germany and the southeastern corridor would be basically uh, the, the vision or the concrete plan to discuss about. الرئيس التنفيذي لمؤسسة هيدروجين يوروب يرى كذلك أن الخطوات المبكرة التي اتخذتها دول الخليج في مجال الهيدروجين منحتها دورا رائدا في هذا المجال مؤكدة على ضرورة وجود شراكة بين دول المنطقة وأوروبا في مجال الهيدروجين. The good thing about hydrogen is it's not just the fuel, it's also in chemical feedstock. So the first and urgent use cases of hydrogen are in industry. So the steel industry in order to decarbonize the emissions, fertilizers, uh, refining, refining, so you need hydrogen in refining. So you have use cases for hydrogen in big volumes that already are there. If you have, of course, on your agenda to decarbonize these industries. That is why uh, we are building at the moment on these concrete markets, fertilizers, steel, refining, to build up so-called lead markets on a global scale. And uh, that's the way to get there. We are after the hype. So it was important you know, to raise the visibility of hydrogen to show it is one of the carriers or even vectors because you can store energy of the future. But now we need to go down to concrete steps. And in these three fields, that's the first use cases that will help to overcome the so-called chicken and egg dilemma. So who does the first step? And um, we build up here. On the other hand, you have the attempt that we can clearly see in the region to decouple from the dependency on fossil. Of, out of climate reasons, maybe, but more out of business reasons, out of uh, reasons, and we can clearly see that uh, here in Abu Dhabi, but also in Saudi, um, to create new jobs in tourism, uh, but also in cyclical fields, in, in circular economy. And hydrogen is the best way to combine the renewable aspect, so the uh, super positive geographical situation that the Gulf region has with the fact to export the green energy. It is doable to a certain extent with cables, but only to a certain extent. The biggest uh, challenge here is how to turn this renewable energy into a, a carrier that can be stored and exported. And there hydrogen is the first choice, hydrogen and the derivatives. And uh, we can clearly see business opportunities for many, many companies uh, and especially also for these economies here in the, in the Gulf region to do exactly that. And honestly, we need that. <laughs> we need that global leadership that will be followed by others. We can already see that India, Brazil, South Africa, uh, let alone China, look at these initiatives in order to copy them, in order to uh, go into the same direction. I'm a European. I, of course, have to understand how can we prepare best for this. We need to partner up with that region because we need also to decarbonize our industrial processes. So Germany, the country I know best, is a big, big market for, for hydrogen uh, and its derivatives. We need to be a good market and a good technology provider because all these technologies that you need, electrolyzers, uh, or the fischer tropsch uh, uh, chemical processes, Haber-Bosch chemical processes, they all have strong uh, engineering power in Europe that we can bring here. So being a good market, being a good technology partner, that's the aim of the EU, of Europeans, uh, and that will make up good partnership with all the countries here in the region. نهاية حلقة هذا الأسبوع من عالم الطاقة شكرا لحسن المتابعة ودمتم بأمان الله اللقاء يتجدد الخميس المقبل إلى اللقاء